are so glad you're joining us for Hope today because we love this next 30 minutes to spend with you. We're bringing you hope, encouragement, and inspiration. Tom, Amanda, and I were all gathered together on this Monday. Probably <laughs> had so many turkey leftovers, oh, Thanksgiving leftovers. But we, <laughs> but we have an incredible show coming up today. We do. I've already had my turkey sandwich the day after, certainly. So, and I'm sure you have too. But I want to ask you, have you ever faced a personal Goliath that you just weren't sure that you were going to be able to overcome? Well, coming up, NFL veteran and Super Bowl champion Darnell Dinkins is going to share with us three daily Goliaths that we need to defeat. He's going to show us how to do that. I'm so excited. An actual NFL player is going to be on the couch here with us. This is so <laughs> exciting. And y'all, he has big rings. Super Not Bowl one, champ. but two. So stay <laughs> tuned to see those rings. It's pretty awesome. But you know, I had an awesome Thanksgiving, Sydney. I ate a whole lot. I'm sure we could exercise with Darnell. He could teach us some calisthenics and burn off those Thanksgiving well, pounds. We, we probably need that. <laughs> Did you notice that we're all Christmas up here, you yeah. know? And yeah. It's a Christmas season. Yes, we have the trees are up. And you know, we actually have a special video from downtown Pittsburgh and Market Square. Take a look. Oh, look at the Christmas tree. How beautiful is that in our city just glowing beautiful. all bright. What a beautiful display. And then you see that's all is that the Macy's building? Uh Kaufman's? Kaufman's? It, I don't know. It's one of those. <laughs> what yeah. is it? These Target? I hear Target's Target going downtown. Coming, but yeah, it's just like so beautiful. It's just like with, you know, the trees and just the, the city is just, you know, burning bright. And it's just, you know, the whole reason for the season is Jesus. And that's what is so important that we are reminded of that mm -hmm. for what our Savior has done to us. For unto us a son is born. That's right. Such an exciting time. So it is, it's with, a beautiful time. That's right. Thinking about Jesus, we have our scripture of the day. It comes from Proverbs 14, 23. It says, all hard work be, brings a profit, but mere talk leads only to poverty. All right, Tom, can you give us some thoughts oh, on that? Oh, man, you know, it, it's easy to talk. I mean, we can all talk, 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 talk about, oh, I'd like to do this, oh, I'd like to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, I think about, um, you know, my wife, she is a doer. She is a person that does things. I remember one time there was a part of our house that needed some painting. And I'm like, well, we gotta get the right kind of paint. We gotta do this, we gotta do that. Next thing I know, you know, my wife is up on the roof painting it, you know, so I'm talking about it. She's actually doing it, you know? And uh, I actually got a call at work and my assistant was like, hey, uh, Jean's on the roof and she has a question. <laughs> it's like, wait a minute, what? But see, that's, that's the difference there is she just took the bull by the horns and did the thing, you know, because we can talk and talk and talk, but talk doesn't produce. You have to do something, Sydney, to, to get to that place where there's actual production. You know, wise man, my father, I always tell me is that, you know, if you just talk about something, if you just say it, that's all it is. It's just a dream. But once you start writing it down, once you actually start putting it into action, it manifests into reality. And so even during this time in this season, I just want to encourage you, is there something that is on your heart that you've been saying? Maybe there's prophetic words that are even spoken over you, but I just encourage you write them down put the things into action now is the time because you know God has put so many things inside of us Amanda so many things to do but I just think how many of us are just sitting on these gifts sitting on the things you know that God wants us to do where it's really time for us to move out to be a light to be a force and so the kingdom will advance like never before that's right so hard work that's for me what I hear when I read that verse and I think a lot of times sometimes we can be lazy and want to do the hard work but God is asking us to do the hard work and you know our guest that we have coming up yeah. he is a man who is into hard work yeah. and also not just talking but doing yeah I know you're predisposed to action yourself right you Very much uh, so. yeah you, you know rather than just saying something mm -hmm. you know with the ministry that you and Gary have you're always looking to doing. take action and we don't always know how i think sometimes you're daunted by but i find it like you sit around and you talk about problems and it's like how about be the answer to the problem like let's actually figure it out and not just talk about it yeah for sure well just coming up in a short break we're gonna have former nfl vet and super bowl champ darnell dinkins with us we'll be right back During this month of Thanksgiving, we want to say a special thank you for your faithful prayers and giving. We're excited to offer you this beautiful gratitude journal with your best gift to Cornerstone Television. With inspirational and thought-provoking prompts and scripture quotes, this guided journal will help you in your discovery of finding peace for anxious moments, joy in life's blessings, confidence to face every moment, 
and strength to persevere in hardship. This journal also makes an excellent gift. Its soft touch matte lamination gives a silky smooth texture to the hard cover. High quality binding allows pages to lay flat when open and a beautiful satin ribbon conveniently keeps your place. Request this special journal when you give your best gift. Call 888-665-4483 or go to ctvn.org slash donate. Thank you for giving to Cornerstone Television. David defeated Goliath when no one thought he had a chance. And today we all face different Goliaths in our daily life. And sometimes we wonder if we're going to be able to defeat them. Darnell Dinkins is a Super Bowl champion who has experienced victory and defeat. And he is now a motivational speaker. And he joins us on the program today to share the three Goliaths we need to defeat every day. Darnell, welcome to Hope Today. Thank you guys so much for having me. It's been an absolute blessing you know, being here this morning. It's great wow. to have you. Well, you bring alive the scripture to me. And when I think of all things are possible with God or nothing is impossible with God, Absolutely. I think of your life. Can you tell us, you know, your beginnings and how you became a NFL player? Well, I think, you know, we look at, you know, the parable. I look at the parable of the seed and the sower. Mm -hmm. And when I was growing up, my granddad used to talk to me a lot. And you look at, you know, I love the smell of flowers. I love fruits and vegetables in the summer. I even love to see, you know, trees change color in the fall. But in all those things, we really miss the significance of the dirt that the seed goes into. So at a young age, my father, my grandfather was pouring a lot of, you know, dirt into my seed, allowing it to germinate. And growing up in Pittsburgh, you know, in the Elmore Square area in the Hill District, I really, you know, encountered a lot of different diversity. So I had to really learn how to starve distractions and feed my focus on what I wanted to accomplish daily. And it was really hard, but Romans 12 and two really stuck to me. You know, mm -hmm. when it says, be not conformed by the ways of the world, but transformed by the renewing of your mind. And whenever you're doing something different than people around you, mm -hmm. you'll really start to see how much you stand out. And by the grace of God, I was a little bigger than most people, right? <laughs> um, I was wearing a size 13 shoe wow. in seventh grade. And I was able to then go on and, and find a skill set. When I was in middle school, my, my middle school coach said, you, you're a little aggressive more aggressive than kids you should think about football started playing the rest as they say is history was a star quarterback um Shinley went on to the University of Pittsburgh they ended up playing nine years in the NFL with the New York Giants Baltimore Ravens Cleveland Browns then won the Super Bowl with the New Orleans Saints in 2010. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Cleveland Browns, Baltimore Ravens. <laughs> oh, those are bad words right. around here. Right. So when I play in the Turkey Bowls, you understand who everybody's coming at. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, in the Turkey Bowls, I'm still feeling the pain. But uh, it's just been a blessing to be able to have that experience and then go back into communities, go back into other areas and allow people to see that when you deal with adversity, it's the very stepping stone that God is putting in your life to be able to level yourself up, whether you look at it as adversity or look at it as a positive trait. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you mentioned something to me that I think is, is really key when I think of a professional athlete. So you've had all, all, all your life, you know, you, you, you went to major college, you got to the NFL. What was it like when retirement came? Uh, and it was like, all of a sudden, everything you've known isn't there anymore. You want me to come out of my shirt on this show, huh? You want me to <laughs> <laughs> it's called transition, right? And it's yeah. something that we all face. But we have to really look at where we're at in the transition and where we're at with ourselves. A lot of self-reflecting, a lot of personal awareness and self-awareness is really what allows you to step up. I got to the end of a career. I had to really focus on the fact that I can't go out and tackle people anymore. I can't go out and catch any passes. And I have to now change my whole mindset and my focus. So the transition, Tom, from coming from a nine-year NFL vet and pretty much 30 years of practicing solely on football and always, always lined up with God was always my foundation. Being able to move into areas and now learn a new skill set, I had to really take into Exodus 4 and 1, where you look at Moses talking to God and you figure if, if, if you have a coach or a parent or anybody, but God is talking to Moses. And the first thing you say to Moses when God says go into Egypt is what if they I had to get over to what if they thought, what if they think you're not smart enough? What do they think you're just an athlete? What if they think you can't do it? What if they think that you are not successful in this business? God said, what is that in your hand, right? Mm -hmm. And the staff, we all have our own personal, you know, you know, ability to do what God has gifted us with. And you have to stop thinking about what other people see in you to become what God has vested That's inside great. of you. Mm -hmm. 
That's really powerful what you're just like talking about. And now you're back in Pittsburgh. And I'm just yeah. curious because you have the staff. God has given you a new purpose and a call. How yeah. are you and what are you doing in the city of Pittsburgh of just bringing God's love and his kingdom here? In well, what I've been able to do, and thank you for asking that question, is I started a company. I was with Bridging the Gap Development. We're doing real estate development. If you look at all these towns, you know, there's so many different issues. Fifteen and seventeen thousand dollars median income with families. That's not enough to really you know, support anything. Thing. So start getting into the construction world where it's so political, you're not only building communities, but you're ultimately building people at the same time. Mm -hmm. So I took that initiative, started TD Construction, where TD kind of scorned with TD, and, and um, I joined the, did a joint venture with Macero Construction, all to be able to deal with the isms that we face particularly in this, in this town. You have um, sexism, racism, nepotism around that field. So trying to get people in these low income areas into the trades. The CARP program is with the East Atlantic States Council for Carpenters. They have a program starting out to teach you carpentry skills for every Saturday for eight weeks. And doing things like that, getting the construction side so I can then hire people from the trades, getting into the jobs, and now you're creating revenue streams and families that you're not teaching skill sets or cre creating, you know, little jobs, you're creating careers with people. So that's been really the focal point since I've been back. And it's been so effective going to the unions and opening the doors for where people thought that there was a lot of opportunity, not a lot of opportunities for minorities or women. Wow. Well, let me ask you about that, because uh, that seems like a, a way to go for so many young people that you know, it, it, college is great for those that, that want to go, but there's also other things like trades. What has been the response from young people when you say, hey, here's a skill you can learn that is marketable and usable for, for your career? What's been amazing, I've been, God has blessed me with the ability to be able to train a lot of kids. So when I first came out of you know, um, the NFL, I opened a you know, company, Ethic Training, which we then shut down because it was a great way for me to be with my kids. My daughter's an all-conference, Kayla Dinkins is an all-conference volleyball player at Tulane University. Khalil Dinkins is a freshman you no know, um, scholarship tight end at Penn State University. And my youngest, Colin, is a senior now who plays football and basketball, first team all conference and football. So I had a chance to put my hand on kids and really hear their heartbeat. You know, sometimes we sit in rooms as adults in this generation and think that we have all the answers. And sometimes you have to be willing to take off your cloak and, and, and understand what people are going through. So sitting with guys like Phil Jakovic, who is now a star quarterback at Boston College, you know, I send daily scriptures to him all the time. I take opportunities like this with youth and help them develop. So Pittsburgh Promise has allowed me to, um, they, they give um, $40,000 for a kid with 2.5 GPA, 90% attendance. They allow me to be a keynote speaker for a lot of their events. So dealing with the Pittsburgh Public Schools, going in there and helping kids understand the CTE program and for the trades to be able to move into the apprenticeship program. So it's been amazing with Angela Mike and the whole Pittsburgh Public Schools, Jake Wheatley, Ed Ganey, you know, they've all been supportive of a lot of the initiatives that we put together. Amen. This is so powerful. And just thinking about the concept of the seed that you talked about earlier, like these lives are like seeds, but can you take us a little deeper into that? Because I have a role to play in my community. You're doing an amazing job and hearing you gives me a desire to do more. But what does that look like? How does that seed be able to germinate? Well, the seed germinates when you get uncomfortable. And when I say uncomfortable is that whenever you're Whenever you are a good person, mm -hmm. you will encounter negative opposition from mediocre mindsets. When you're going in and changing environments, and sometimes you get some opposition, you have to be willing to understand and have a focal point of what you're trying to get accomplished and know that most of the time when you're trying to create change, most people will tell you why I don't want change. Right. Mm -hmm. So whether it's being on, you know, shows like Hope Today, whether it's doing you know, podcasts like Dealing with Goliaths, whether it's doing, you know, works where you're speaking to the Pittsburgh Promise, whether it's being active, sometimes you just have to show up. And the biggest thing that I say, if I show up, sometimes I don't always have a plan. We all know when you're producing things, it's kind of chaotic before you start. And everybody's like, man, that's great. You're like, oh, five minutes ago, I was losing my mind. Right. <laughs> but just trying to get in front of kids and let them hear the story. Right here, let them hear the testimony that the one thing that you're constantly fighting against is no one else but yourself and your thoughts. And that's why it's important to have a foundation that's based with your spirit base. It's good to have your studs be rooted in your emotion base and keeping in control, have your wiring and your plumbing based in and your mentality and how you think and then physically with your, your drywall is just your skin and how you 
present those things in reality. And I try to make sure that people spiritually, emotionally, intellectually, and physically are capable of understanding God's purpose and then being able to educate and help those people so their seed can germinate. Amen. You know, uh, when you think about that, you, we, we mentioned that there's three areas that people are struggling with, right. Goliaths like that. You know, when I think about David, he had faith in God, that was his strength, but he also had wisdom and how to use the, the smooth stones and all that. But you mentioned three areas to me as we were preparing for this, that personal fear, lack of vision and rejection are three areas that people are facing, Goliaths that they're facing right now. What have you seen in overcoming those? How do you, how does, you know, and, and with COVID, things have been made much worse, Amen. even in these areas. There's much more lack of vision, I think, right now. So how can we begin to take down those Goliaths in those areas? First, dealing with fear, right? Mm -hmm. False evidence appearing real. Mm -hmm. You have to understand that the things you think or just the things you think until someone comes and shows you that, I like that idea. I like the idea of what you're saying. So I'm going to deal with this, my fear directly. I'm going to start looking, not looking at the things that I can't do, but say, God, if you put this in me, when I'm sure when Noah was given a vision of building an ark, <laughs> there wasn't no one he could talk to about building an ark because he's the only person who had the vision. So understand when God has given you a purpose and a plan, you're the only one that's going to see it. So you have to get over your internal fear to be able to move forward into what God's purpose is in your life. Mm -hmm. The second phase is really the vision, right? In Proverbs 29, 18, people without vision will perish. And I see in a society where, you know, what is our vision? People are saying you wear a mask, not a mask, you need a vaccination, not a vaccination. So, mm -hmm. so we're all so confused in terms of what the vision is for our future, where I say that the Bible has been for here for thousands of years. So if I'm looking for a vision, I'm going to rely on the source and not resources. So I'm mm -hmm. constantly going there. And the last phase of that is that when you do all those things together, then you, once again, faith without works is dead. So now you put all those things in line. You allow people to see what you're willing to do. During COVID was feeding, you know, people who were homeless, dealing with the veterans, delivering food to people who were in um, um, senior homes, you know, starting, you know, drives to be able to get, you know, COVID tested so people can just understand. Sometimes when adversity is hitting, that's the very time where God calls up you know, his saints, he calls up his people to be able to go into those situations. Hebrews 11 and one, faith is confidence in the things hoped for and the assurance of the things unseen. And those are the things that I rely on. I try to see things as not as though it were and try to not get caught up in my own thought of what can't happen. I say, God, even though this is uncomfortable, I am so not comfortable in this space. I'm like a butterfly stuck in a cocoon. But once I come out, I understand that your glory will be done. Your grace is sufficient enough for this day. I love that so much. It's just all about the thoughts. So a lot of people deal with these thoughts that are just bombarding and they're never ending and never ceasing. What right. would you say to somebody who's watching right now that is dealing with that fear, that feels paralyzed, that feels like they're stuck in that cocoon? What can they do today? What can they do now to make sure they break out of that? You have to write it down. I say, you know, write down a vision and make it plain, like in Habakkuk, right? Mm -hmm. Two. When you write it down, you start seeing what you're really saying to yourself and what you're believing, right? Because it really comes down to, you know, when you look at Christ in, in Mark 6, he said, uh, what is, makes a false prophet? Someone who cannot be in his own town, right? Your, your, your parents, your, your friends, your family. Um, Tom, you can't be a, you know, evangelist. You can't, you know, you know, preach to people because you're just Tom. And sometimes the people who you are around can be sometimes a deterrent that stops you from meeting your blessing. Once again, what if they, what if they don't believe me? Write it down, pray about it, get counsel and people around you that can help you manifest those things and don't just keep it in your head. Because one thing about it, we are always with ourselves. And so people tell me like, it's, it's funny, I, I deal with my kids, we always put our hands up to each other and say, man, your hand's so big. But to me, my, my hand is not like, I say, right? <laughs> right? That's a big hand. But, but to me, my hand is normal, right? Until I put my hand up, it was like, oh, my hand is big, right? So you can't just look at things through your own eyes. You have to be willing to understand that when you are blessed with something, it's not to keep it a secret. The very thing about, you know, being a blessing to other people is speaking what God has put inside of you. And then you get a chance to see how that seed germinates. So that's what I would say. If anybody's struggling in their own home and COVID, create a lot of isolation, which create a lot of, you know, messed up thoughts sometimes. You have to be willing to get out of that old mold, write it down, and then get people around you who are accountability partners who can help you get through. That's right, that's so powerful. You know, we started off with a verse. I wanna read it again. <laughs> Proverbs 14, 23 says like this, it. all hard work brings a profit, 
but mere talk leads only to poverty. Now, you had to work hard to be in the NFL. Absolutely. I mean, you had natural ability. Right. Yeah, size. Right. A little bit. <laughs> but <laughs> you didn't have everything without no. the hard work, right? No. And a lot of times people say, man, it's, it's just, tell us about working hard enough to break through that barrier to get to that next level. You know, I look at hard work like this. It's failing and failing and failing and never losing ambition. Because if you look at just your end game, then you might get discouraged when it don't happen your way. You look at me, I was a, a quarterback when I went to Pitt. I played quarterback, linebacker, safety receiver. I drove the team bus, I washed clothes. They had me doing everything <laughs> down there, right? So I had to find my way in that. So then I sat out a year, I got hurt my last year, played in the last game at Pitt Stadium. We beat Notre Dame 37-27. I, I thought, remember that game. Right, oh, people great. were, were coming awesome. out, ripping up the field, and I'm sitting there crying. People were probably like, yeah, we won. I'm like, this might be my last game ever, I'm hurt. And I remember in that space, Tom saying, you know what, this will not be my last game. I know that God has a purpose. So I would, I was doing juvenile probation. My daughter was born. I'm, I'm feeding her while, while my wife at the time was, you know, working. Then I would go into work, work 311 in juvenile probation in McKeesport, where I was dealing with a lot of different people, going to the gym from 12 o'clock to 2 o'clock at night, wake up tomorrow at 7 o'clock and start all over again. To me, I was not going to allow my own thoughts to stop me from getting what God's plan was. And sometimes a blessing delayed is not a blessing denied. So when you're working hard, you got to understand that it won't always come to fruition in, in the first time or the second time, the third time. Look at Thomas Edison, 10,001 times when he finally got it right. You know, he's not looking at the 10,000 times before that. It just made him better. And I just realized every time I work, you know, it allows other people to be see not only the work ethic, but then be inspired. Rasheed Marshall was a star quarterback from West Virginia. I probably shouldn't say West Virginia, being a pit guy. <laughs> star quarterback. And we was working out the other morning last week about 5 o'clock. And he said, D, I want to tell you something. When I was driving to practice, I was, he was 12, I was like 16. He was like, I seen you running hills with your weights in your book bag. I seen you running with your football. That work ethic inspired me to keep pushing forward. He ended up going on to West Virginia as being a star quarterback, going playing for 49ers. So you never know. You never, ever know who's watching, who's watching you in the field, tending to the line in the beer. So when you have an opportunity to face Saul and say, hey, hey look, I can beat this Goliath. Mm -hmm. And he's trying to give you his, his shield and his sword. He's saying, you know, look, I got my five smooth stones and my slingshot. You may not see the value in it, but watch what I can do with it. So you can't listen to other people. You got to be willing to persevere through it. Mm, wow. This is so good, Darnell. I'm just, when I hear you talk, you have such a foundation on God's word. And I'm wondering, like, what did that look like for you? Like, were you into your Bible on a regular basis? Like, how did you build that foundation? Because you've been through some stuff. This was yeah. not easy. Yeah. Coming from where you were and doing what you did, it was all hard work, but you have so much of the word coming out of you. Yeah. So what does that look like on a daily basis? Sadly to say, as many of our viewers who sit out there may know, it's like it's, it's birthed in pain, unfortunately, right? Mm -hmm. When you come so calm, when you find God's peace, that peace of Paul, mm -hmm. you've been through some hardships. I've been through rejection. I've been through, you know, physical abuse as a kid. I've been mm -hmm. through growing up with a mom. So the word was living for me. And at the same time, I went through Jehovah's Witness. I went through Christianity. I went through the, the mosque. Like my mom introduced me to a lot of different religions. And when I was a child, probably five or six, I had an encounter where I kind of, everything went white and I ended up in a bathroom. And I don't know if that was a holy, the first Holy Spirit encounter that I had, but since then I've been able to understand things that most don't. I've been able to pray for people who just go up to people and say, hey, look, I was in PNC one time talk, pray for a woman. I said, there's something going on with you. Say, I have cancer. We, I sent her, I wrote her wow. message every single day. Three months later, she was healed of um, stage three cancer. Yeah. You know, and the list stories like that goes on and on. So mm -hmm. I understand that the calling, you know, and the blessing comes from all the pain that I, I had to go through silently. It was embarrassing sometimes going through the situations mm -hmm. at Pitt, but I never, ever, God never left my side. You know, I could truly say in my quiet times when I'm crying, when I'm on my knees, mm -hmm. I get in my prayer closet and I'm up at four o'clock and I'm making sure that God understands regardless of what I go through, your grace is sufficient enough today. Amen. Why don't you take yeah. a moment, Darnell, look into the camera, just look right into the camera and pray for that person out there that says, man, it sounds good, but I haven't experienced it yet. Why don't you pray for them? Just bow your head and let's just, this, we just coming to you right now. God, we just thank you for your grace today. 
We thank you for your abilities, your capabilities, your equipment, your power, and your anointing, Lord. I pray that whoever out there listening right now, you just touch them right where they're sitting, right where they're standing, right where they're walking. If they're in their car, Lord, just minister to them. Just tell them that you know that you're always going to be with them, Father God. Allow them to understand Proverbs 3 and 5. We say, trust them, Lord, with all your heart and lean not into your understanding, Father God. Allow them to tear down all the molds of rejection, of pain that they feel. Allow them to come to you surrendering, Lord. Allow your spirit to manifest and come alive with inside of them, Lord. Allow that seed that is birthed deep down inside them to be edified and germinated right now in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. Who's ever struggling, who's ever backwritten, who's ever feeling like they can't go on, who's feeling with depression, who's dealing with loss, Lord, touch them right now where they're sitting, Lord, and allow them to know that you're with them. Allow them to feel your spirit just move in their life, Lord. I just thank you for everybody who's able to tune into this show right now. I pray that, Lord, whatever they're dealing with, Lord, that you manifest the spirit within in them to allow them to do exceedingly and abundantly more they can ask, think, or imagine according to your power I work with them. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Oh, that was so powerful. As you were just like praying, I just really like heard in my spirit, it's time for you to get your battle plan. <laughs> and you even mentioned something, Darnell, I have a prayer closet too. There is something about when you just set aside a place for God, where you just say every day, I'm going to meet you here, God. I'm going to sit at your feet. I'm going to listen to you and hear what you have to Amen. say. And God will give you the instructions. He will begin to download things to you. He'll begin to speak words into you. He'll begin to speak scripture into you. So I just encourage you today, get your battle plan. Be in the presence of the Lord. And I'm telling you, when he gives you your battle plan, oh, right. it's your sword. You go, shing, shing, shing. <laughs> and anytime the lion comes, you just say, get off of my family, get off of my marriage, get off of what of my children, whatever that get off of is. This is the season and the time that all of us as believers that we just need to hear the word of God, to listen to him, because I'm telling you, friend, there is nothing like it because we are victorious. And in the end, we always win. That's what I love about Jesus so much. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Amen. This was powerful. Powerful. Darnell, we're just blessed that you're sitting here on this couch. I know our viewing audience, this has been, we entered in yeah. and there is nothing that God cannot do through your life. Like it, it is so encouraging to me hearing your story. It's the God of the impossible. He is true. He is real and he loves you today. That's right. All right, let's see that Super Bowl ring. Where, where's that? There, there, there it is, right there. There's that. <laughs> right here. And, I, and just to touch off that, right? Yeah. Matthew 6 and 22, the light of the body is the eye. Therefore, when the eye becomes single, the body shall be full of light. Mm -hmm. At one point, I thought I was in the, in the sea, lost. And God said, look down, you're a lighthouse. Mm -hmm. Who can't see a lighthouse when you're lost right. at sea? That's right. That is so good. Well, we are so grateful that you joined us for Hope Today. We're so grateful, Darnell, you're with us and you were with us too because this is what it's all about. We love spending these 30 minutes to give you hope so that you know that you have a purpose, you're victorious. And you know what, today, let us all take out our Goliaths because you know what, Jesus is with us. Have a great day. <laughs>